lads, let's, let's just jump straight into this. Our big debate, our big talking point. Is rugby becoming too dangerous? Gordon, uh, where do we start with this? It's quite a loaded one, isn't it? Yeah, it kind of is. I suppose we have to be reasonably careful or thoughtful what we're, how, we're, how we're talking about this. I think one of the things, um, for me anyway, is the, the game has uh, evolved a lot. So we're talking about the, you know, the benefit of the younger guys and health and in the, in the gym and their nutrition and everything. They get it bigger and players have gotten bigger. But I think the game has changed as well and players have moved away from looking for space and looking to create opportunities by the ball in the hand. And they've looked to, I suppose, dominate the contact. The natural, um, I suppose, counter to that is the defensive teams are looking to get more physical in the contact. So a rule has always been there, or the, the rules have always been there around the high tackles. And I just think that the tackle height has been creeping up and creeping up and you have this choke tackle. And now you have monsters of men literally putting in these hard hits and trying to stop people on, 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 on the gain line. So there's been a natural, I suppose, physicality, over physicality come, in, come into the game. Um, and I think the, the teams that are going to innovate around this are the ones who are going to look to create space and they're going to look to bring um, players into that. Unfortunately, I think Toulouse actually have two of those playing to, today in uh, Tamak and uh, in uh, uh, Ramos. Um, so I think the game has just creeped this way a, a, a little bit, but I think it can come back. It can come back from it. But the rules of the game have to reward attacking rugby, and at the moment they uh, they actually reward the defending team. Jamie, you were forced to retire from rugby through injury, prem, you know, more prematurely than, than you would have wanted to stop your career. But is that just one of the accepted dangers of the sport? Do you feel? Yeah, for me, I've always had the, the my thinking on it would have been. You hope that the powers that be are doing everything in their ability to make the game as safe as possible, but it's a contact sport, so you've got to understand, accept, sorry, a certain amount of uh, risk in the in the game. Um, people will get hurt, and that, that's what happens. Um, and you've got amazing facilities and staff and doctors and all that sort of stuff, access to these amazing people to to make you fit, get you fit again and look after you, and you hope that that, 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 that continues. But that would be my thinking on it. Um, you know, uh, according to Dars, cue the music here. But according to, according to Dars, um, you know, what, or, sorry, what Dars said in terms of the attacking game and, and the way it's evolving, I actually think that's where Leinster have made a difference in the last two years, where they've looked to look to attack the space as opposed to run through people because players have been getting bigger and a big, big emphasis on that. But in, in come back to your point regarding the injury. You know, that would be my thinking that you hope the Paris be doing everything to keep as safe as possible. Dan, and that England professional rugby surveillance project that Miles and Ed talked about earlier highlighted some big issues. One of them was a concussion was down, which was good news, but the length of time that players were out was longer. Is it getting more serious or does that actually mean that protocols are working? I'd say it's uh, probably protocols are working. I mean, um, something obviously had to be done, but it's happening more, I think, in... Uh, in training more than on the field at the minute so that probably has to be looked at um, I think all it is I think uh, for me personally I think it's education at the clubs I think you know with all these stuff whether it's defense attack I think um, we've got to be taught from a younger age you know defensive code techniques and all things I think all that needs to be looked at again from from clubs point of view and hopefully you know moving forward we can stop all of this uh, concussion stuff or help yeah, right, we've got a couple of tweets here, and this one's quite quite fascinating. It says the, the big problem with rugby uh, these days is that players are too conditioned, uh, too solid, uh, there's no padding, and they need more pies. But, you know what? <laughs> you know, I firmly agree. I firmly agree. Well, that's the suggestion. Depends who you ask. Yeah. Front row might have a very different point of view yeah. as James. Who sent it in? Because that might give us a clue. <laughs> I'm just not going to say who sent that one in. Uh, got one here says uh, it's not becoming too dangerous. Uh, awareness of um, concussion has become better. Hence, uh, there are more reports on concussion, and uh, that's a good thing. Players can't play on if they get a knock in the head. I, 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 that's you know, come back to what you were saying in terms of it's now been measured. It's now been looked at um, you know very differently than even five years ago uh, even ten years ago um, I mean it, it, there was a bit of a mindset you know a guy would be concussed on the field and you'd, you'd know it and you're trying to kind of manage it as opposed to now it's it's taken out of the players hands because a player I think most players will always try and play on regardless of being hurt they'll always try and get on the field you got to take it out of their hands and that's what they're trying to do before any game gents uh, were you ever worried that you know what I'll have to, have to think about going into a tackle on this one or is it just part of the game do you just go in and you just try and get it done 
Maybe the only time would be when you're coming back from an injury, and it's not necessarily that you're conscious of it. There might be, you know, when a hamstring, uh, say maybe a hamstring injury, you're always worried about that final ex acceleration. But there can usually quite a cathartic um, element to it as well, because when you actually chase somebody down and you realise you've gone a full tilt, you're like, oh, that, that's incredible. For me, it would have been, say, shoulder, like a five shoulder reconstructions. And it's that first one when you're coming back. Um, and I remember when I came back from my broken arm and the first tackle I had to make happened to be Stephen Ferris and it was not exactly the one I wanted. <laughs> one, on, one on one, I happened to be in the backfield and Stephen Ferris running at me and, you know, it's just that moment, you, you just, the rugby brain just takes over and you hop up afterwards and you're like, great, yeah. injury yeah, is done.